do you see as the relationship between your client and yourself and how do you go about trying to get them the best deals? Mm -hmm. I think ultimately what's important if you're in any of the, the media fields, including music, it's having a good relationship with your lawyer um, because your lawyer is the one that's going to have your back. Um, of course, it's important that you, you get that trust and you build up that relationship because when those contracts come, you've got to be able to trust that lawyer that they've got their best interest for you. And, and yeah, no matter whoever you're dealing with, whether it be a small little company or a big multi-billion pound company, they're going to try and get the best deal for you. Deals today, um, you've, you've, you've been amongst, you know, you've seen things like 360 deals. Um, what, are the, what are the standard deals that you're seeing for most artists today in, in, in music? Mm -hmm. it, it's a variety of things. I mean, you mentioned it previously. Um, there are 360 deals out there, um, uh, but you have to just make sure that that deal is the right deal for you. Um, uh, in, my, in my work, I've helped um, people with publishing deals, I've helped people with management deals, record label deals, um, and then synchronisation and sponsorships and endorsements. It, it's a variety of things. Um, sometimes I'm representing the management company uh, and they say they're about to sign a new artist, could I send them uh, a management deal for them to sign? And sometimes I'm representing the artist um, because they've just been given a management deal and they need someone to look over it for them. So let me ask you a couple of like, uh, legal terms. Um, is it perpetuity? Yeah, in perpetuity, in a perpetuity. lovely word, or um, maybe not. <laughs> that's almost the word that we should always try and cross out depending on what side of the tape we set. So um, yeah. in perpetuity, mm -hmm. can you please break down what that means? Yeah, exactly. So in perpetuity basically means forever. Um, so uh, if you see a contract that says, we own your rights to whatever it may be, in perpetuity, it basically means we own them forever. Um, and as you said, um, what you try and do as a lawyer is try and actually reduce that period of time because you want to try and, uh, you obviously want a deal to be, to be made, but you also want to make sure that, that you get the best deal for the artist and perhaps assigning your rights to your music to a record label for forever might not be the best deal for you. Licensing deals, mm -hmm. um, is that basically you give the people a certain amount of time to exploit, mm -hmm. quote unquote, your copyright or mm -hmm. material and yep. it comes back to you at a certain point? That's right. I mean, um, uh, to, to, to bore everyone sort of copyright 101 lesson, um, you can either um, uh, assign your copyright, which means you're, you're giving it to somebody for forever, or you can license your copyright. And so ideally what you try and do is you license your copyright for somebody for a fixed period of time, obviously for a certain amount of money, and that way you know there'll come a time when actually the copyright that you've, you've given will come back to you, and if that deal wasn't a good deal, you can go to someone else, if it was a good deal, you can then renegotiate it and hopefully get an even better deal. With that being said, it's in the label's interest to assign permanently because that then goes on their books as an asset that they can bank. Um, what is the actual benefit for a label to license? Does it mean that the artists have leverage at that point? Yeah, I mean it depends. I mean if, if, it, if a record label comes to an artist and everyone's trying to sign that artist, then sometimes a record label will come and say, rather than assign the copyright to us for forever, for in perpetuity, why don't we agree to have a license for a 15, 20, 25 year period? Um, and, uh, and the artist might say, well, okay, you know, uh, rather than me having to assign my rights to you for forever, I can probably work with that. Um, but yeah, it, it's if the artist is really in demand, then those sort of conversations come around because the record label wants to do anything they possibly can to make sure that artist signs with them. So in that case, at what point, so let's, let's quote unquote role play. I'm an artist, at what point do I think, do you know, I need to have Luke English representing me? At what stage yeah. do you like to see the artist to be at? Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, no, <clears throat> at, at, at the end of the day, um, uh, I have a, a, a Twitter, uh, and on my Twitter I have a little phrase and I basically say 
don't sign a contract without DMing me first. Don't, you know, please, because what I don't want to do is, is I appreciate people in the media industry, they're creative and that's great and they've got a talent that I certainly haven't. Um, but what I don't want to happen is for them to see a contract, get all excited, sign it, and then not actually realise what they've signed. Uh, unfortunately, there are instances where people come to me and say, I signed this contract, can you look over it for me now? And I'm like, no, I can't because you've signed it. You know, we can try and renegotiate it, but, you know, depends on who you're dealing with. They might say, well, you signed it, you agreed it. Um, so I always ask people, look, if you've been given a contract, then, then get in contact with me um, and let's go through it and let's just make sure that it can be the best it can be for you uh, and that to be frank, you, you don't get conned. Because um, unfortunately, um, in the media industry, there are companies out there and people out there that want to exploit you and take away everything you've got. And that's not very nice. I'm not saying it's a majority, but there are some people out there. What does a bad deal look like? <laughs> I don't know. I yeah. spoke about that one um, previously <clears throat> before because you know, some people feel like, well, I've got a deal, I'm going to get an advance. Mm -hmm. um, but what does a bad deal actually look like? Well, in theory? yeah, I mean, I, I've had instances where I've looked at the contract and it said, for no advance, we're taking your publishing, we're taking your master recording, and uh, any, any money you receive whatsoever all comes to us, and uh, we might pay you £500 if we reach this certain, certain amount of money that we, that we, from selling all, the, all our product. That, to me, is not a good deal. Um, but, um, no, that's literally like a yeah. blank piece of paper, yeah. and let's just see what we can get away with, yeah. and see if it comes back with it yeah. not being taken off. Exactly. Um, so it's basically, we want all your rights for everything, we're not going to give you anything in exchange, and it's almost like you just sold, sold your soul to the devil. Uh, and when you know, I see contracts like that, it's horrible, because there are people out there that would have not got a lawyer or not got an advisor to look over it and signed it and thought, yeah, this is brilliant, but actually it's not. You've just got to sign your life away. The lawyers, obviously, they protect the interest of the client or the company, mm -hmm. or depending on which side of the table you see it. Mm. So when you come into the picture and you see that contract and you give the advice to your client mm -hmm. and they're like, okay, like, go ahead, do your thing, we negotiate, mm -hmm. does the other side know that Okay, now they've got a solicitor on their mm -hmm. side that is literally about not what can we get away with, but mm -hmm. we're not going to get away with what we initially thought we could. Yeah, uh, I mean, at the end of the day, um, one would hope that if you're instructing a solicitor that's competent in those types of contracts and they then send back that contract marked up or amended, then when the other company receives it, they're going to go, whoa we probably aren't going to get away with what we thought we we're going to get away with now. Um, and sometimes I advise clients, you know, it's entirely their decision, but if they want to walk away, then walk away. If, if the product they're producing is good enough, then they don't necessarily have to sign the first contract that lands on, you know, on their desk. Uh, and if it's the not right deal, then, then have the strength in what you produce to be able to say, no, thank you, but I'm not accepting this. I will wait. Um, and if I'm good enough, then other contracts will come that will be the right contract with the right people. Because my experience is it's all about relationships. And if you're going to have a relationship with a record label or with a manager, you've got to be happy with that relationship from the very beginning. And if there's things that you're not comfortable with whilst we're negotiating those contracts, then maybe alarm bells are ringing and it's time for you to actually say, well, thank you for the contract, but I don't think this is going to work out long term. Because these are all long term contracts. You know, management deals can be can be two years, but they can also be eight, ten years. Let's just talk about, uh, yeah. talk about um, management contracts and sunset clauses mm -hmm. and how that fits into place with yeah. an artist. Yeah, okay. So, um, as I said, uh, let's pretend a management company has approached an artist that I'm representing. Um, one of the things I look at is, right, how long is this contract for um, how long is the term for? Um, is it a two-year term, three-year term, five-year term? And then as you mentioned, there's something called a sunset clause. So the term might only be, say, three years, but there'll be a period of time when it's expired where the manager continues to receive his commission or her commission. Um, 
And basically their understanding of this is, well, if I'm helping to build up you and your brand for say three years, um, you might not have broken and become a multi-selling platinum artist yet, but I've helped you to get from this stage to another stage. Uh, and because of that, um, I think I'm entitled to some monies even when the contract's finished for all the work that I've done, all the contracts that I've brought in. Um, and that's, that's standard in a, in a management deal. Obviously, what you need to negotiate is how long a period of time after the contract's expired do you allow them to receive, to make it up, a 10% commission or a 5% commission for. In reference to that, have you ever seen the sunset clause be ridiculously long and a high percentage? Because, I mean, I know it's a thing that people shouldn't be worried about. Like, mm -hmm. We part ways, we still got to work quite a bit this notice. Mm -hmm. But at what point do you think that that's actually going too far? Mm -hmm. Well, um, uh, one of my clients came to me um, and uh, yeah, I'm afraid it was that horrible situation where they'd already signed the contract, so we, we didn't have a relationship beforehand. Um, and uh, she informed me that her management contract had a sunset clause for 25 years. Now, I'd, I haven't actually seen the contract myself, but that's got to be the longest sunset clause I've ever seen. <laughs> it's really crazy. Well, well, that's it. That supports 25 years. Um, when does a manager, because this is the, I'm trying to get the dynamics, because I want people to understand that they need a lawyer, mm -hmm. no matter which um, part you sit at. Um, when does a management deal almost mesh into actually a production deal? Because sometimes mm -hmm. you look at the managers investing financially. Mm -hmm putting money in mm -hmm. working studio sessions. These are, in theory, the things that a manager is supposed to do. I think yeah. they're supposed to manage the career and guide it with expertise. But once yeah. you start putting money in your pocket and mm -hmm. start financing it, mm -hmm. does that now move it more so into a production deal mm -hmm. where it may be more of a 40% mm -hmm. of That's a very good question. I mean, I think, uh, I think it's worth thinking that uh, what is this management deal going to be? Sometimes, as you said, it could be your standard management deal that for a 20% commission, they manage you and they, they help you to be able to, to get gigs, to, to, uh, to get radio pluggers, to get you across record labels so people will start getting interested in raising your profile. Some of them, as you said, um, like to take artists that are at the very early stages and they like to develop them, like to actually put their money in their pocket and pay for studio sessions, pay for producers, uh, and build up the artist because they see some potential there, but the potential is not really yet to go to a record label. Now, in those instances, as you said, I would be looking at the clauses to say, well, it's highly unlikely this is just going to be a box down a 20% commission. Um, there's going to be clauses in there about expenses and about development funds and how much is that fund and how does that get repaid? Does it mean the 20% now becomes a 25 or a 30 or 40% cut until the money's recouped? These are the things you need to look at. And then of course, on top of that, there's the expenses of the manager um, traveling around planes, trains, automobiles. Uh, and, uh, and again, you've got to look at that to make sure that that's managed properly. Because the last thing you want is for you to be an artist and be completely broke because you keep on paying thousands of pounds for expenses of your manager but not actually seeing a lot coming back. Fact, well, not funny, but it's interesting you say that because sometimes that incident happens on major situations where the, uh, the managers claim an expense is like, I went over here and it's mm -hmm. over there and it's coming out of the artist's budget. Mm -hmm. uh, moving on to the portion of publishing deals, mm -hmm. When, you, when you're negotiating a publishing deal, mm -hmm. um, okay, so I'm going to try to see why I'm good with my publishing. <laughs> it's full songs, isn't it? Like, in terms of, like, mm -hmm. you may sign, is it eight songs? It's 800% of a song. So uh, a song may be 50% to the producer and then the other 50% to the songwriter, the splits of the actual song. But when you're going for a publishing deal, what type of things do you factor in mm -hmm. in terms of how you get the best deal? Is it like whether mm -hmm. they actually are they charted already on their own? Because mm -hmm. I think some people have signed publishing deals, and myself and G Fresh were talking about this, they signed publishing deals for like 
5,000, 2,500, really mm-hmm. small amounts in the whole publishing. So mm-hmm. how do you approach a publishing as a, as a solicitor? Mm-hmm. I think there's lots of elements that you've got to look at. Um, to be frank, there's kind of a bulk standard list of splits about, you know, if, if we sell this, this are the splits you're going to get. So we're talking about mechanicals, um, not so common these days, but you're talking about print, which is actually um, your music in a songbook being sold in a music shop. Um, and obviously the key, the biggest one that everyone really wants to concentrate on is synchronizations, because you need to make sure that when you sign to a publisher, the publisher is going to try and push your music as much as possible, because to be frank, the money is in the synchronization. So if you can get your music on an advert for a very popular car company, brilliant. Um, it, but it's obviously making sure that those, those splits are in your favor so that if they do do their work and they're able to get you that, and then there's some good money in that, then it's not all taken away from you. Um, but yeah, you're right. You've got to look at, well, if they're paying me in advance, is this advance, you know, does that work for the length of period of time that I'm giving you them the publishing rights? Um, sometimes, as we mentioned already, a, publish, a publishing deal could be, will we own the rights in perpetuity? Uh, is that in your best interest? That's the question. Um, is it more actually, let's reduce that. Um, now we appreciate that you've got to work and you've got to push out that music and you've got to make some money um, and you've got to try and recoup the advances, but you've just got to make sure that, again, it's the right deal and at the right splits. Um, and that there's nothing that they've accidentally forgot to put in the splits. Audit in. Mm-hmm. Um, that's an artist's right to audit mm-hmm. the company. What's your take on yeah. audit in? people audit publishers as well? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I expect in any, um, uh, in any uh, contract, whether it's in television, film, or um, music, or theatre, if, if it's with a, a big company where they're collecting monies on your behalf, it's important that you have an auditing clause. Um, and I, kind of the standard one is that you're allowed to audit them um, once every 12 months. Um, now, the extras which I always try and put in is, well, what happens actually if there's an underpayment? Um, so actually, if you owe me money, what happens next? Um, some people say, well, if there's an underpayment, we'll just pay you, but it doesn't say when. So you need to find out, right, when am I going to get paid? I'm not actually going to want to wait till the next quarter or semi whatever it may be when, my, when the payment terms are due. If you owe me some money, you pay me the money now. Um, and then you might want to think about, well, what about interest? You know, if it's an insubstantial amount of money, it's been in your bank account, not my bank account. And I appreciate interest rates are low at the moment, and it's nothing of nothing, but still, it should have been with me, not with you. So why don't you pay me interest on the money that you owe me? And then the other thing is, um, if I've gone and paid out money to get an auditor to audit it because I thought that I was owed some money and I was right, then actually I think it's compensation you should pay for my auditing costs. Pay for legal costs. Yeah, um, so it's important. Again, these sort of things you are, aren't often standard in a clause, but you add them in to get value. But I also think it's just making sure that a publishing company, a record label, whoever you're dealing with, is transparent. and. It's quite clear. Look, guys, you know we, we don't want to make it, don't want anyone to make any mistakes. But if we do audit you and you do owe me some money, then just pay up the money and give us a bit of compensation because that shouldn't shouldn't be the case. I shouldn't have to audit you, and you should pay me when I sh- when I should be paid. Yeah. So, just trying to be transparent with it.